Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Sanderford's Rules. Also, the V-Team takes a look at East Art's failure. And what's going to be in the call for the special session? Oh, that? Oh, that's the usual clause. That's in every contract. That just says, uh, it says, uh, if any of the parties participating in this contract are shown not to be in their right mind, the entire agreement is automatically nullified. Well, I don't know. It's all right. That, that's in every contract. That's, that's what they call a sanity clause. <laughs> you can't fool me. There ain't no sanity clause. Oh, that's what I thought. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. The Voice of Alabama Politics. With your host, Bill Brett. Now, the number one political show in Alabama. The V. Welcome to The Voice of Alabama Politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the V-Team. Welcome. Good morning. Today you get Bill and the Blondes. It is Bill and the Blondes. Uh, I never mind that. I do. Excuse miss me. Them. Most of us pay for that stuff. <laughs> well, who will bring that up, Claire? Well, hey, I don't Harper's know about. Hey, in Birmingham. They do great work. Yeah. Well, <laughs> listen. You know, you're supposed to get wiser and blonder if you're a woman. This That's is right. true. Uh, it. It. I have to say, Governor Bentley's announcement of an announcement of an announcement video was just a little odd. I mean, he, he came out week, week before last and right. he said, we're going to have a special session. I'm going to announce it. And then he came out and he did the video and announced that we were going to have a special he forgot session. the date. Now. But he didn't give us the date. Uh, we understand now there is a firm date. And uh, so it looks like, uh, Beth, the lottery's in the call, something the Democrats have been looking forward to a long time. But this is a Republican sponsoring it. Right, it is, and I think that's the only way it's going to get done, unfortunately. And, you know, I couldn't help but wonder watching Governor Bentley as he was announcing that he was going to announce that he was going to call a special session. Um, you know, with all of the, the fluster around possible impeachment, that maybe they may had to feed him a little something to keep him smiling during that thing, because he seemed off to me. He just didn't seem like the governor we're used to. He seemed very staged. He showed his teeth a lot. But he looked he, good. He really well, did. I, I, you know, yeah, I mean, but it just wasn't the Governor Bentley. I think, we're I used think to. everybody's just looking for something. I thought it was a very natural outside, you know, he has had his tie off, he was talking to the common man, the little flowers were in the background. Um, you know, I mean, the bottom line is, we can quit talking about impeachment, y'all. He's not been convicted on any We agree, we agree. We agree. With that completely. So, you know, let the man continue to do his job, because I have to remind y'all that we did leave somebody in office for two and a half years who was convicted. So I think people should yeah. talk. Oh, I agree, I agree. Me but of that. Let, let's get okay. on to the, yeah, back, but get on the, get back back to the He did a great job. I think he's for it. You know, we've seen this in our state before when we have Sigelman that was uh, governor, and it just was how it was rolled out. But the main thing he laid out, Beth, was talking about passing the enabling legislation, then mm -hmm. setting up a commission, and that's not something that they had talked about and came forward to this last spring. And I think that is important in how the lottery operates well, because that gains the trust of the people. Well, one right. of the things that's been a problem and a sticking point, and that we've seen this across the nation, if the lottery has all this laundry list of what's going to be finally included in a lottery, it fails because everybody's got something to pick what they don't mm -hmm. like. Or, I mean, we're going to have a lot of special interests coming out against this, Susan, aren't we? We're going to have a lot of special interests. And so that the viewers know the, the importance with this date, that the August 15th date, is so that they can get it on the general election ballot. Should it come later than that, there's not enough time to get the, the uh, uh, get it on the ballot and have to have a special session. So mm -hmm. that's the importance of the day. And, 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 and special, the special election. I mean, special and election. Special election cost how much money to do that? Several we million dollars. Four million well, and then, million. then the opposition's got all the money in the world. Right. So the bottom line is it has to be passed out of the Alabama legislature by August the 24th in order to make it on the November right. ballot exactly. during the presidential election. Exactly, and which will take some of that special interest steam out of it. You're going to have special interest coming in between now and November, but if you gave them as far as February, we're talking about a total mess. Well, we're going to be invaded by the Mississippi folks, mm -hmm. the casinos over there, the mm -hmm. Choctaws, 
Uh, naturally, the Porch, Creek, Porch Creek does not want it to happen because it's going to open up some doors they don't own. And I think even the gambling <coughs> facilities here are probably not. They, they weren't for it unless they were included during this right. session two years ago. Well, our surrounding states are going to come after us because Alabamians are going and getting their lottery tickets from, from neighboring states, and they're not going to want that to stop. Mm -hmm. Every time I cross the state line, I spend $20 on scratch-offs. It's just well, that's it's exactly part of what the routine. Governor said. Mm -hmm. all, of, all the Alabama citizens are spending money, whether it's Tennessee, Florida, uh, you know, they're spending Georgia. it. We you might know, as well concern, keep it at home. My concern, though, if we're just going to do the enabling, the enabling legislation, and then we'll do the commission, is I want to know what this money is going for because we have not seen the legislature treat money the way it's supposed to be spent so far. And it would change my vote if they're saying we're just going to put it in the coffers and wherever it goes, it goes, versus it has to be spent in this particular place. Well, I think place. you know a lot now of people, want, out, a lot of people want, want it to be in the in the. In the education, they want right. people to go to education. A lot of people want to go in the general fund. I think the, the main thing is you got to get something passed, mm -hmm. and then you don't want to constitutionally uh, demand earmark that money. it earmark it. Right. You want to let that be something that can grow or change over yeah, right, time. Because right now, our crisis is in the general fund and Medicaid corrections. It's not education. There is money in education. Right, until we spend it all on things like infrastructure, like they're trying to do. And so that's the thing is, like, we have schools in Birmingham with waist-high grass because they can't afford to, to hire somebody to cut the grass. So we've got money in education, but it's all kind of tied up. Well, that goes back, that goes back to the mis... <laughs> my, point, my point is simply that, the yes, the issue... Goats, we do. We really do. My we point already is have... <laughs> we have issues in the general fund, yes, but is it going to go to prisons or is it going to go to Medicaid? Well, and those are two very I different issues. I think that's issues. why they're leaving it up, flexible, Right now, my understanding is it's going to the general fund at this point That's right. because we have so many problems in the general fund mm -hmm. that but let's just get the lottery there. Then we can see where it best suits us if it if they need to move it to the uh, education trust fund later and move the use tax back to the general fund. This but gives them a little flexibility to try to fix a multitude of problems. I mean, let's put it down. You got to have it because you know time can change from one year to five years to ten years. Oh yes, know? it can. Right. Right. Well, but what's been consistent is we've had a boiling pot in Medicaid and corrections at least for the last 21 years. I know oh, that's yeah. a big factor, not I, education. I want to move on to the next subject before I do. I, I just say that. A lottery is bad policy for a policy way of financing government, but that's all we've got. Nobody wants to raise taxes. That's right. So we, that's we've what cut we've got. As far, we've so cut as far as we can possibly you, cut. We're, we're talking about uh, endangering people's health at this point, and that's People not have acceptable. to realize this is the reality we live with. Every state except for six has a lottery. Bring it in. Get the money and do some good with it. That's well, my opinion. But the key is bring it up, pass it to let the people, sure. the citizens of the state of Alabama vote. That's Absolutely. what's got to happen. And that's what they well, want to vote, up right. or down. Well, there's going to be a vote either Monday or Tuesday in the Republican House caucus where they elect a new Speaker of the House. The disgraced Speaker is awaiting his handcuffs in his jail cell. Uh, Claire, we, we know that there's there's several folks yeah, there's still a, in. There's a lot of them. In. I think it'll come down between Matt McCutcheon and Steve Klaus. Well, mm -hmm. that's what we're hearing. Is that what you're hearing, Beth? Yeah, they seem to be the two that are really putting in the work to make it happen, from what I'm seeing. The only concern I'm really hearing with the Klaus uh, uh, side of it is he is saying that he's not going to change anything. He's not going to change any committee assignments, any committee chairs. And there are a lot of people that are having issues with that is, uh, among the legislators. Well, there's just, you know, there's, there's, there's that Hubbard element that's still there. I mean, and, and both those guys served Hubbard, uh, but they seem to want to bring in good government. We're hearing that from both of them. Uh, but I, we hear that, uh, you know, Mac McCutcheon has the edge right now. Nobody knows because Barry Moore's still in the hunt and a couple of other folks. You know, it can get weird. When you have, with the Republican caucus having the pledge it has that they'll all vote with whatever the caucuses vote, that kind of simplifies it a little bit. Um, but, you know, if that were, if they were to decide to break with that and put the Democrats voting in the mix, too, that could always change it. it I, don't, I don't think that'll happen. I don't think they're going to, but it, it could change, change it. It may change later, but I don't think they've got time enough to do it. Right. Right. And I don't think they want to. Let's leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back.
Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. There are more lawsuits going on right now than you know. You just don't know which one's coming next. Uh, there's another lawsuit being filed over Bentley's pet project, the beach uh, renova renovation. renovation of the beach, governor's beach house. <coughs> the beach house yeah. and the luxury uh, facility Both down there, same. the convention and all that. I mean, Beth, what are you seeing with this new lawsuit brought by Johnny Mac and... Uh, well, you know, they dismissed, they dismissed the one that was brought by, was it Grimsley? Mm -hmm. So they're right. saying he didn't have standing. And so, you know, I think the biggest thing here is if we're challenging it on an unconstitutional use of power, you've got to have somebody whose power has been usurped here. And I'm, I'm not an attorney, so I don't know all of the ins and outs. I haven't taken constitutional law. But I think what it comes down to is, um, you know, Jim Ziegler and Johnny McMorrow are two people who had the authority to watch this money and appropriate this money and when the governor took it that gives them the ability to now file a lawsuit that has standing because basically he's my understanding is he's he's breaking the three separate branches of government right. he's going over he's taking his uh Executive, executive executive and going over to the legislative branch. Because right. you have to, be able to show damage. Money. You have to, be able to show yeah. harm. So, exactly. so that's how they're saying well, we've been harmed because our rights. And, and even if you're for the project, which a lot of folks think that beach sure. convention center is a great idea that. because we got associations going to Florida. I mean, right. Alabama associations going to Florida and holding big they're events. They're in Sandestin all the time. Yeah. Uh, so, but the other th side of it is it needs to be done properly. We don't govern mm -hmm. by fiat, and that seems to be. Excuse what, me. Done properly in Alabama. <laughs> Be a little bit I, wouldn't know what that, I wouldn't know what that was. If it Section 8 knows. makes it, of the Alabama Constitution makes it very clear that any funds spent in the state of Alabama must be, whether it's gift funds, whether it's grants, whatever, has to be appropriated by the legislature before anything can be set up, before anything can be moved. And I think that's where the governor is coming in and saying, well, this is mm -hmm. BP money. It's not technically public funds. And that'll be for, for the judge to decide because I don't have the research on that, whether it is or it's not. I think it is. I think if it's money that's been entrusted to the state to spend, then that's public money. The money can't. The, the government can't spend anything but public and money. And let's be reminded too that they've already appropriated this money. The legislature has already taken steps to appropriate this money, and the governor didn't blow the whistle saying, "Wait, you can't do this. This is my money to spend." You no, know, they did, you know, they actually did not do the right appropriation. They did not make that that bill did not pass so the BP money is sitting there and right now unless they go in and do something and say it has to be used for X, Y, and Z, the governor does have the discretion of the BP money, which is private sector money, that came from the oil spill, then comes into the general fund, so then there for it makes it. But public here's money another sticky that. wicket. They're going back to the two thousand ten money. This whole project wasn't set up until two thousand thirteen. So that money couldn't have been attached or intended for this well, time. I, I can assure you, if, the, if, the, if President Obama was doing that in Alabama, they were, you would have a whole host of people raising cane, and that's oh, really yeah. kind of what he's doing. He's saying, well, that's, I'm executive order this, I'm right. executive order that. We've heard nothing but nothing but about the president's executive orders, and then nobody's willing to raise a flag when the governor does right. it. Right. Well, you know, and listen, it may be a good project. Uh, I have some issues with it, but it should be done according to the law. We've seen so much lawlessness in our state. Uh, but there's just tons of problems, and, and we don't know how to fix half of them because the people are not willing. How about that ticking time clock? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You know, we did a story a couple, last week about eStart, uh, which is a time and attendance program that, that the state has paid now about $7 million to implement. And, uh, you know, we wrote a story about it, and we got a call from somebody at the finance department or email said, well, you don't have the facts. You know, you need to stick with the facts. And so what we did is we, we found some letters from 
uh, personnel from uh, the Attorney General's office and others saying it doesn't work. So I think the Finance Office got our point that we didn't say it didn't work. You got Luther Everyone Strange. Everyone has said it just like Tom McVeigh, John yeah. McMillan, exactly. you know, all these agency heads and elected statewide officials. Uh, to and Susan, break down the problem for okay. us. If you can. It's I just, can. It's a little complicated. Basically, the, the bottom line is it's a duplication of services. But let's just look at eStart, for instance. What this is is supposed to be an online time clock, all right, which is fine, except for one, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't keep time correctly, and it can't add and sub subtract correctly. The way, way you put your time in can mess with the way you get your leave, which is very important in the state of Alabama. Uh, for instance, let's say you have a state trooper. A state trooper begins his day. He clocks in when he gets in the car at his house. He clocks out when he gets in the car when he's at home at night. Well, if you're in the black belt, you don't have Internet service. You can't clock in and out. So they try to devise a app where they could get around this, and that was going to cost $45 per trooper per phone. In the it's end, just and that's how they work. It, it, it's it's just, no, it's just here to go. $45 a month per trooper per phone. Well, that's make good economics. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. The kicker is, is when Jackie Graham wrote her letter, she told them that the software she has is working just fine. And if you look hard enough, it's actually the STARS software that's handling the personnel correctly. Oh, Why have we got eStart coming in trying to do the same thing? But it's thing? not exactly. It's a package that's part of the, what it's they call a package, STARS. There must be some friends and family and lobby. Somebody's making money. Somebody's now. making money because you've got CGI that has STARS. You've got Kronos who started this eStart program in corrections and then eased their way on well, in that's the way they about two or do. three years later. Mm -hmm. Well, well it seems to me there needs to be some uh, serious investigation and looking to what going into the finance office when it comes to all of this high-tech technology because this has been a blackout. We've been talking about stars and now this. Since before for, Christmas. And, and, yeah, well, at and, least a solid year. So and, and something needs talking, to happen. Somebody's head needs to roll over this. All over state employees all over the state who are, you know, just crying that this this is just so much extra work that they're having to do with both stars well, and we, eStar. We talked to te two agency heads that said it's yep. like having another job. It's like having another job. They spent well, at least an hour a day on that day's payroll. Wait, wasn't there was something that happened with the Board of Adjustments? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. That? That's stars. Mm -hmm. We that, go back to stars. This right. It's all a mess. It needs to be fixed. Two, it, two weeks ago or last week, I can't remember when it was, the Board of Adjusters uh, for the state had to come together and approve for one agency to pay another agency agency, a year old debt because stars won't let them pay each other. No, I mean, wasn't, it, wasn't it the governor that said the most conservative thing we can do is pay our bills? I mean, yeah. why are people not more upset about this? I don't but, you know. It wasn't like a $20 million payment or something yeah. like yeah. that? Yeah. Now, I was talking to a, uh, one of a, a state employee yesterday and said, you know, if you have two locations for your business and the East uh, Stars has one address and you file it under another address, it, it kicks work. it out and refuses to pay it. Yeah, and, and guess it's, it's what? Even simple Bill stuff Newton like that. gets $7 per mistake on stars. And that goes in his little silk purse over here, yeah, that that's little nice. fund he has. Uh, you know, they, maybe 100 a day, seven times 100, that's $700 this a day. This is egregious. Good. I'm telling you, somebody needs to get to the <laughs> bottom of this. I actually used your word yesterday about this. I did. Would you put $20 in my can? <laughs> <laughs> put well, it on my account. Well, speaking of Claire's can, we're going to hold it right there. <laughs> You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. It's time to take a road trip. In Alabama, the road and the restaurants are calling. We've elevated barbecue to an art form. A meat masterpiece. Fine dining your thing? National awards are putting us on the map. Because everything's fresh and local. And if you like your dinner with a view, well, you can't beat this. Alabama has a road trip with your name on it. Which one you gonna take? Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Beth, last week we had a very special edition 
I sat down with Spencer Collier for 30 minutes and talked about all the things that happened leading up to his firing and then afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, we heard that story before, but we had never heard it put succinctly because of all the hoopla around it. Right, right. It was it was good for me, you know, and as I'm reading it, it was kind of like, oh, okay, that's how that comes together. And so I know that, you know, if, if we do this day in and day out, you know, people who watch the show or who follow us, you know, on The Political Reporter, they, I'm sure, loved having that timeline. And, and honestly, you know, for me too, the bigger takeaway was being able to hear it come straight out of his mouth because you could tell how difficult this has been for him and that it wasn't something that he did to try to, you know, get his name out there, to do anything self-serving. Like, you could tell this was a very difficult process by the way that he handled himself. I mean, Claire, we got so much response from it and he, he generated a lot of sympathy for him and his family and I think it's well-deserved. Oh, yeah. Well, it, like Beth has mentioned, I mean, you know, given the closeness between he and the governor, this was a very difficult situation and then the way it's unfolded. So it's just, it's very unfortunate. Uh, you know, Susan, I think one of the things you see in that, that, that video of Spencer is an honest man mm -hmm. who has felt betrayed. I mean, his, his name has been out there accused of crimes in every paper and every news uh, story out there. I mean, we know the Spencer and, and his wife, and they are just some of the nicest folks you're ever going to meet. Salt of the earth couldn't find more honest people in the world, do anything for you, give, literally give the shirt off his back kind of guy. Who, you, who has dedicated his life to law enforcement. It, you bless Melissa, Melissa's heart. She and I have talked about being the wife of a cop when he used to patrol the back roads of Alabama with nothing between him and a criminal but a gun. Uh, and it worked his way up to the very top position only to be, have his legs cut out from under him for one, from someone he considered a father figure. And you can see when you watch that video, you can see the pain in his face. You can see the betrayal. One of and the it just things we, we haven't reported yet because we could not confirm it, but we have now confirmed it, is that that almost immediately after Spencer Collier left on to go on medical leave, uh, he was in contact with other law enforcement. I think also the U.S. Attorney. Uh, it's somewhere in that timeline, and he was followed. He was followed. He got a text saying, uh, did you leave your wallet in Prattville? Mm -hmm. yeah, he I, hadn't been in Prattville in 12 years. Yeah, uh, I, I, the whole thing is so bizarre. And, I, I, you know, in my heart of hearts, I think that this is not the governor that we all knew. I think there was somebody behind him pushing him to do things that have gotten him to the situation well, here. And they, he immediate, they immediately started investigating him, from what I understand. Well, that's, and, and we verified Not just following, those but facts. That, we haven't but, written the story yet, but we verified it with law enforcement and with other people that surrounded Bentley. Mm -hmm. But what we can't know is it was Bentley in cooperation with Mike Hubbard using his investigators to go after Spencer. What is it? Women, money, and power destroys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've seen it with our speaker. Unfortunately, I think we're seeing it with our governor, yeah. and it's right. sad for the state of Alabama, well, I mean, but you I know, think that, that's the fact. You almost got to think that country. Rebecca Mason probably gave the order to fire Spencer. You think? Right. Well, yeah. and, you know, yeah. it's one of those things, we all know how much it stings to have somebody who you consider to be like a family member who turns out to stab you in the back. And so, you know, I, I just think it was great for Spencer to come on the show and let everybody see the man we know him to be. Yes, it was. Well, it, you know, listen, he made a lot of enemies uh, when he took over Aaliyah and just stood strong for Bentley. But he didn't deserve to be disgraced. And uh, well, I think he'll have more day. He'll have more time in the sunshine. Well, you know, that, that grand jury uh, that we got pictures of Bentley going in and out of, hey, it was Bentley, uh, it was a Dan ta Stabler. Taylor, it was Stabler, it was all the folks involved in the firing of Spencer Collier. And you know, the second advice I got when I started working in politics, y'all always told me follow the money. The second yep. advice was always do the right thing and the politics will take care of itself. That's right. And I hope that's something Mr. Collier knows right now because I think the politics is going to take care of itself. On I this lived one. through that for about four years, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been, you know, uh, you know, it, we're just sort of now coming out from under, uh, uh, you know, the Mike Hubbard regime. I think some of us still got PTSD. Yeah, from, you better start here and there. Been through. And then so why did our sweet Mr. Sanford do what he did? About well, yeah, and you're bringing up, you're talking about uh, Howard Sandiford.
who's uh, head of the uh, Sunset. Sunset Committee. Uh, he, he, there was a conflict with the committee meeting, and so he moved the date uh, to from when it conflicted with the Republican convention over to where it conflicted with the Democratic convention. And Laura uh, Hall, 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 who is a great, you know, been around forever, does a great job. She wrote him a letter and said, "Look, I sent you a couple of dates." And, and, and these two I didn't want you to use. And, and boy, he must have sent her a nasty letter because the email she sent back said, I'm offended at a time mm -hmm. when our nation is divided. Boy, you didn't do well, the right it's, thing. Well, it's weird because, you know, everybody has known, at least for the last year, this is the date for July for the convention for the Republicans in Cleveland, and they've known this is the date in Philadelphia for the Democrats. Don't plan any legislative meetings. Too right. many people go. I mean, that's right. just common oh, don't you think that well, was you deliberate? Know, I, could, I could have seen, though, I could have seen it where... But he know, did it on the last day, right. so... Right, well, but I could see what Representative Sanderford would say, you know, oh, well, if this doesn't work, we'll just bump it to next week. And then somebody says, wait, the Democrats are in Philadelphia. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, let's right. bump it a week later. It should have been one of those, like, I could see where it was an honest mistake to begin with, but then to double down on it and say, I don't care. It, you know, on that committee, if you knock the Democrats out of it, you knock out every minority vote on that committee. And, and I mean, like, it's just, that's one where we have to have a diversity. Well, it makes sense, the because if they're coming in next week, tomorrow, or Tuesday to elect a speaker, then do the sunset the following day or the next same yeah. day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's an important... Uh, committee that to have uh, everybody's voice on. Look, the the Republicans have control. That's fine. That's what the voters wanted. The Democrats are hopefully the loyal opposition, although they don't do much. But we all have we to can't. work together. There's not many well, I mean, we, You know, look, we got to work together. Everybody represents about the same amount of people, so there there should be a little Listen, bit more give. Let's just hope that it was an oversight. Okay? We have a, a grand mistake. opportunity as a state, as the government and everything right now to change things moving mm -hmm. forward in a positive way for the state of Alabama. And then working together on things like these dates and not doubling down and being stubborn is somewhere to start. Right. Try to start trying to work it's together. Well, it's work not attractive the when the Democrats do it, and it's no. not attractive when the Republicans mm -hmm. do Neither it. Either way. And, and we all should be better than it's that. It's like Mom always said, if you mess up, that's okay. What would you learn from it? And it's time right. that we show what we learned from this. And we how you learn. handle the mistakes you make. And we, okay, we have learned a lot in the last four years. Mm -hmm. So we need to take that knowledge and move forward with it for a better Alabama. Well, as Ronald Reagan said, uh, you'd be amazed at how much you can get done if you don't mind who gets the credit, right? That's mm -hmm. right. All right, that about wraps it up, but we have some sad news to report this week. Our friend and colleague, Bob Gamblacurta, long fixture in the press corps, passed away suddenly at the age of 71. He will be missed. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them. Thank you.